your hands in the air if you're real as me. Welcome back to the MBH podcast. Money buys happiness. Miami buys happiness. We are here, approaching the end. Finish line time. It's finish line season. It's the sh- we're on the straightaway. We're on the fucking straightaway. I can't wait. Because eventually we got to go home. Sadly, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I say that with the most saddest fucking voice ever. Yeah, um, we got a big, big season planned for next season. Yeah, yeah, we Part. do. But uh, finish line time, and we're going to see if he shows up today. We have the Marcelo Hernandez. Yep, the legend. <laughs> the legend. The legend himself. He's um, so much of a legend, he just might not show up at the same time. He might not show up again. <laughs> it's round two. You know, we're prepared. We're fully prepared for that. But um, Are we? Have we ever had guests, a guest not show up? Like, we've had guests cancel. No, well, yeah, we had a guest not show up. One other Like, we guest. thought they were coming? Yeah, but the problem was, uh, whatever, the, the problem is that we're doing these new segments where we just talk for a bit before the guest comes, and we've never done that before. So if the, when the guest didn't show up last time... We, we had to start playing checkers. We, no, no, we just, <laughs> yeah, we just chilled, whatever. Yeah, no, I yeah. think we recorded another host episode, but anyways, guys, Marcelo Hernandez, comedian. I'm sure you guys know him. If you don't know him, check him out. He uh, His IG is literally Marcelo Hernandez. You'll see it in the bio or in the in the description. Marcelo HDZ. Boom. He's... Uh, Marcelo... He's, <laughs> he's jokes. He's a fucking jokes guy. He has a really, 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 really funny content. He's a comedian, does stand up. Um, and then he's also the creative director of Only in Dade, which is... So Dade County, Miami Dade County is like like the region. I don't know what the fuck you call it here in America, but it's like the region in, of, my, or of Miami. So... Um, yeah, he does stand up too. Yeah, but, but but I want to talk about what he does. Well, the only in Dade. Only in Dade. It's like their version of Six Buzz for Miami. It's called Only in Dade. So check them out at Only in Dade. He's a creative director behind the account. It's fucking massive. They're killing it. So I only want to be in Dade. <laughs> That's I'm why only in I'm Dade. only in Dade. Now. I'm only in Dade. <laughs> From now on, I am only in Dade. I'm only in Dade. Unfortunately not. He also does stand up. Yeah. Um, Makes a lot of content. I think on TikTok he has maybe three, four hundred k followers. Yeah, no, he's doing, he's um, doing good. He's opened up for Tim Dillon. Oh yeah, yeah. Like that's that's what it says on his website. I'm about to ask him now. It better <laughs> better be fucking true. Oh, we're by the way, we're, we're we're gonna come in hot today because he left us hanging last time. He's so gonna explain to us. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of questions he's got to answer. But uh, but yeah, he's gonna have to explain. You know, um, it'll be a good. But one. interested to talk. Like I always like talking to comedians. I mean, we've had not Mark Anthony. We've had Nima, we've had um, Bello Porto, Andrew Oporto. Yeah. Right? And and it's always fun talking to them. They're obviously great speakers to begin with. Um, There's something about comedians that, like, I feel like they're, <laughs> sometimes I feel like they're almost smarter than everybody else. Does that make sense? Uh, well, they see so many, like, I feel like to do comedy, you have to understand different perspectives. Yeah. True. You know? Yeah. So I think that goes hand in hand. They're good speakers, but I, I don't know. There's something about them that were just like... I, I think I like speaking to comedians and, and talking to them because a big thing about being a comedian is like pushing the boundaries, you know, yeah. of like what, I mean, it's in today's day, what can and can't be said. Right. Yep. And so I feel like they do a very, like they, they're, they're, they're in that realm of like, you know, seeing what is allowed and what isn't allowed to well, be I, said. I want to talk to them about like the censorship and shit too. And, and yeah, you know, how, be good. how that's been for him. Speaking of censorship. What about it? I think I'm still shadow banned. No, by you're the getting way. better. I am, but it's not it's not nearly what it you're should be. Better. You're getting better. You're getting better. <laughs> better. <laughs> better. So pretty um, much if you if you type in your whole name on IG and and you No, well not your whole name. No, if you, you have in, to type in your whole name to find your for name. For me, for me, yeah. If you have to type in your whole name to get to a, a profile, yeah. they're shadow banned. Yeah. And speaking of censorship, and and I, I think I spoke on this briefly in in our, one of the last two episodes, but man, more and more on Twitter. I'm seeing all these people come out and ever since the announcement of Elon Musk buying Twitter happened, all these like, 
some some of them are literally like right wing politicians and like news anchors and shit. And then some of them are just like like Dave Portnoy, for example. Okay. Yeah. All these politicians, right wingers or just people who are, I guess, outspoken like him, who people might think is is very right wing. They're all showing, literally, they're showing the stats because on Twitter, I've never seen this before, but on Twitter, you can literally see day by day how, if you gained followers and, or if you lost followers, like they'll give you the breakdown and they're literally showing red, meaning like they've been losing followers steady every day. Twitter announces Elon Musk takeover, boom, all green going forward. So it's like, dude, it's like all these guys are slowly coming out. And, and again, then you look at a guy like Dave Portnoy, for example. He just tweeted that yesterday. And he's showing red, 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 April, whatever, the day Elon took over. Yeah. Now he's gaining thousands of followers. It's like, damn, like, were they really censoring people like I that mean, Elon hard? Musk is all over Twitter right now. It's just him. Dude, he's responding to everybody, everybody. which I love. Yeah. Which I'm seeing I that. I fuck with that. I think he's going to do good for the platform. I think he's going to do very good for the platform. We're going to see. We're going to find out. It but couldn't then, get any worse. <laughs> couldn't true, get worse true and then what's even like what's what's even crazier is the the um, just you know now, now they're on the topic of censorship the um, dhs the fucking um well i forget what the fuck that stands for in american but the homeland Se- the department of homeland security they literally like a week after elon musk buys twitter or the announcement happens they form um an information a misinformation board <laughs> Bro, what like it's like it's so blatant. It's like Elon Musk takes over Twitter. He's gonna focus on free speech on the platform. One week later, oh, the department, yeah. the, the the department, uh, whatever, Homeland Security is introducing a fucking in, a misinformation board where we're gonna uh, lay down all these laws on these all these platforms to make sure that they're following and that there's no misinformation. It's like, damn, you guys are really are like just out there. It's fucking blatant now. I mean, they got their problems here too. You know, in the states, they got some they got some issues. Well, yeah, like Look at Joe Biden. Guy can't even, <laughs> bro. If I see one more video of this guy, just like, uh, duh, duh, uh, duh, uh, duh, uh, like he's just gonna fucking die one day on TV, bro. And he's like, and we're gonna take the things away, and we're gonna, <laughs> and it's great. He literally and, there was that one he glitched. Yeah, yeah he glitched. He, but no, but like it's like the sentences. Okay, so he's saying words, but the sentences aren't making sense. So we're gonna take the Russian oligarchs things away. <laughs> And then it's going to, you know, the hills of the Himalayas. And then everyone's just like, Kamala Harris in the background. She's like, bro, he, that guy's hanging on by a thread. It's an embarrassment to the country. It's an embarrassment to North America. It's an embarrassment to the free world. The I Western. wonder what, like, the people that voted for Joe Biden, like, I wonder... What they're thinking? What they're, like, thinking when, when he's on TV and, and <laughs> the man can't talk. Yeah, that's the guy you chose to represent the country. Like he can't even talk. He's like looking around. He's like shaking hands with the air. Like the shaking hands with the air was <laughs> fucked. Up. The shaking hands with the air was like fucked. that's your guy. Yeah, that's bad. But I mean, hey, but he's just a, a full blown puppet. Yeah, yeah. That's... He, he doesn't even know what's going on. No, I, I really think that he doesn't understand. No, no, he has, what he's doing. He has zero. He like he must. He either has Alzheimer's, dementia, he has dementia what, for sure. What, whichever one it is. He doesn't know what's happening. No. Like at, at any moment in time. That's fucked. He doesn't even know where he is half of the... 90% of the time, not even half, 90% of the time, the guy doesn't know where he is. But like if, if you're if you're seeing this and you're part of the government, like what are you thinking? Like other politicians around, like even, well, no, they're even politi- democratic ones, like even looking at him, like just like, bro, this is... No, they're really just playing around. You can't hide it now. You can't hide it now. But 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 I like but the thing I like about the states is that your governor can make a lot of decisions for you, and especially in the way that you live. Right? Again, we always go back to it. Ron DeSantis, Florida. They're not following anything that the fucking federal government's telling them to do. Yeah. So I like I like that they have that power. Where I feel like, I think, in Canada they technically do. But they're all pussies there. Like Doug Ford's a fucking pussy, bro. Like so many opportunities, these guys. So many opportunities these these people had to like. I seen a post on Six Buzz. Oh, they deleted no. the post actually. My comment was going was running up. Well, what was it? Um, it they were talking about the social distancing wristbands that Doug oh, Ford. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. apparently they were gonna create these wristbands that you wear. They're for social distancing purposes. So if you're too close to someone else's wristband, it'll beep. 
Insane. So Six Buzz posts it. Insane. My favorite my favorite platform is Six Buzz. Yeah. Six Buzz posted it. And it said, Doug Ford planning to implement social distancing uh, bracelets. Do you think he's a genius or not? Nah? Was that actually the genius that, or not part? Yeah. That was real? Okay. That's where I commented when I seen that. Oh. And I said, what on earth is genius about this? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's all I said. Yeah. And it was running up. Okay. Deleted? And then I go back to look at the comment. Deleted. The comment or the post completely? The post. Sorry. Yeah. They didn't delete. They don't delete comments because they know they'll get blasted. To no, they can't that. do that. They can't do that. But... Um, yeah, that's what they're talking about in Ontario. Yeah. They're talking about wristbands. That's proper. Um, what else Doug Ford said today? He said they're extending the 407, which is our private highway in uh, in that's, Ontario. That's that's owned by a foreign entity. Hilarious. He's just, he's just extending it wider just for him, <laughs> just because he needs more room. You know what's crazy though? I was, I was I was having this conversation yesterday. Here, you don't even talk about COVID. Like no, no one even. Like it's not even a thing no. here. Like, like literally. Yeah. Well, like I was in, I was here with you for seven weeks before I had headed back to Toronto for a week, and bro, literally the second I got back to Toronto, the first conversation I had was about COVID, and it's just like, because that's, st- that's all they got there. We're still talking about that. Well, the thing is, when when your radio's talking about, it, your TV's talking about it, when Six Buzz is talking about it, when Blog is talking about it, everywhere you look. Yeah. They're talking about it. You go look at a billboard. You look on a bus. There's a fucking guy with a mask on a bus. Yeah. What? It's everywhere. It's literally like everywhere. It's yeah. brainwashing central over there. Yeah, I know. I know it's fucking brutal that we. Like, I, I hate that it, uh, we're even talking about it. But I just, it's just the only time we'll talk about it here is like, um, like we just saw someone with a mask on outside. Yeah. <laughs> I know. What I know. year are we in? I know. It's brutal, but. He no, no, hold on. The mask outside? No, the mask outside is Stop. fucked. Stop. Yeah, the Stop mask now? outside is fucked. The mask outside is fucked. Stop. It's Stop fucked. it. Because, bro, that's that's that that shit. That shit pisses me off. Yeah. You're literally can... walking around like an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's you're the walking thing. around like an idiot. That's like that's here's, all it is. Here's what I will say. It's very few people in Florida. No, no, it's in like, Miami that it's are like doing older that. people. Or even like you could tell they're tourists and wherever they came from, they're still doing they're still it. in it. Yeah. You know, so you can tell. But people don't give a fuck. Like I, I, like when I'm here, I don't even have to think about anything like that. No. And then, and then even people like people just let you be who you want to be. And then you know what else? I, now we're just on the topic of how much I love Florida and Miami. I was having this conversation too. How like it's such a good place to be if you want to grow and you're an entrepreneur or business owner because like you're like okay, I'm gonna compare it to Toronto as a perfect example. In, uh, here, let's say the lower class, the lo- like let's, you know, whatever, whatever you call that, is probably made up here a lot of like immigrants from like Cuba, Dominican, like more of those like Spanish, Caribbean, and then South American countries. They're literally leaving their country that is like either war torn or, or has a communist regime in place. And they're coming here and they're like, bro. This is the American dream. Why do you think so many people I can, come? I can no, but I can. For however hard I work, that's like how much I'll make. Yeah. They're like, whoa, we never, we didn't see this back home. Like, yeah. this is crazy. So, so let, let's say the people who come at the beginning, who are lower class at the beginning, are fucking hustling here. Now compare that to Toronto, lower class. They're sitting at home on their asses collecting money from the government. Twitter Boom. fingers. Twitter fingers. Doing nothing. Yeah. No motivation. Right? Then you move in. Let's move to the middle class now. Let's say someone who's making 60, 80, 100, 150,000, even 200,000 a year. Here, they're like, bro, I'm fucking investing in Bitcoin. I'm fucking buying this. I'm buying this property, still flipping it. Still broke. <laughs> flipping. No, 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 no. Yeah. But here, okay, like yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're using, they're hustling and using their money to like, Invest and do things like we've met a lot of people who oh, are in that here. here. Oh, no, no, here. Okay. No, no, here. I'm saying if you're making 60, 80, 100, 120, you know, 150, 200,000 in that range, whatever. They're, but they're like, them, I'm saying that call them the middle class. They're like hustling to like work harder, uh, grow more, start their own business, buy houses, flip them, Airbnb, crypto, this, this, that, whatever. They're like, boom, hustlers here, middle class. Middle class in Toronto, they're making, let's say, 100K, 150K, 200K, whatever. Bro, they're going to their bosses. They're saying, I only want to work three days a week. 
Two hours a day. Two hours a day. I'm going to stay at home in my fucking pajamas. I'm going to turn on my computer at fucking 12 p.m. Work for fucking... And my dog needs a job, And my too. dog needs a job. Actually. And you're going to provide me Uber Eats every day to my thing. It's like, bro. And I need new purple hair dye. <laughs> okay. So then, boom. So you're like, look at that. They make, they make good money. They still don't want to invest. They, they still hate their jobs. They don't want to actually work. They just got lucky that they work for a company that has no other choice but to hire them. Like, boom. And then you're like... And then you're looking at the upper class here. I won't even talk about the upper class here. Upper class just stays Man, upper class. We keep it upper class. Come in, come in. Oh, uh oh. Did we get him? Yeah. No worries. No, no, all good, all good, all good. Come in, come Got in. Got someone special? Yeah. <laughs> there he is. There what he is. Up? Start clapping right now for Marcelo Hernandez. <laughs> Guys, this is real life right now. <laughs> okay? He's actually here with us. This is not, this is not a fucking game right it's not now. A whole grab. Oh like man, I'm so happy to have you here, bro. I was I was actually getting worried again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know what? Hold you, on. You, you gotta explain. We need an explanation. We need an explanation. Uh, how how okay, let's let me just give some context yeah, yeah, yeah. first, okay? We had it we had him booked in, I think, last week. Last week. Um, and then I hit him up. I'm like, listen, just come like 20 minutes, 30 minutes into the episode. <laughs> yeah. And come late. Uh, <laughs> they ask you to come late. Yeah, here. come late, come late. Um and then he just didn't come. And then uh, I, I was. <laughs> and then this is what happened. So uh, I couldn't make it right. What happened was is that I um, I volunteer at the Miami Aquarium and um, not at the Miami Aquarium nearby, like around it. I I clean up garbage, right? And um, at the near the time of the podcast, and I told him, I go, guys, I'm sorry, I'm I'm doing this thing where I pick up garbage, and they go, who do you think you are? <laughs> Why are you picking up garbage? The environment, we hate that here. We're all about money, right? <laughs> they, they were very mean. And so I said, I said, um, I said, I apologize, but I would like to reschedule. And they were at least gracious enough to bring me back. No, I overslept. I slept through the podcast. <laughs> I slept through the whole podcast. What, what happened? Did you get into one the night before? No, yeah, no. I had a, I had a show in Fort Lauderdale, my own show that I was headlining. I hadn't done Fort Lauderdale before, like by myself. Like I was nervous about it. And then afterwards, I like dropped off my car and I was like, I want to go out. I want to like go out and listen to music loud and just, uh, and I did that. Okay. I did that and the music was loud and, uh, I woke up just like angry, dude, just angry anger. I sent them like nine messages. I come off so arrogant with these glasses and this hat. I, I sent I them, it. I sent them like a five paragraph essay on like how irresponsible I am. Like I was being, I tried to be very, I tried to be very apologetic. No, we appreciate that. Yes, you have <laughs> you know, to. And, and last episode that you were supposed to come on, we ended up just, uh, you know, going with the flow. <laughs> we kind of had to, you know? It was a good episode, though. But Marcelo, Marcelo, welcome. Yes, bro. Dude, thank welcome you. Show. Welcome, man. Um, How stoned are you? That's the real question. I'm not stoned. I'm not stoned. I'm not stoned. <laughs> are you just like, are you just naturally? Yes, like, this is who I am, right? <laughs> so this is something that we have to get over. I am not on drugs. <laughs> Let's just say this to everybody real quick. Marcelo is not on drugs. Okay. I don't sell them. I don't I don't do drugs. Okay. Marijuana, I think, is not a drug. It's not a drug. Um, but not on drugs. Okay, not on ADD medication. Perhaps I should be. Do you drink do you drink espresso? I don't drink coffee, dude. Stop. I don't drink yerba mate. I am this guy. Right? That's just crazy. Holes. Dude, you know what? Like a lot of the energetic people we meet. They're always like, bro, I don't drink coffee. I don't even drink. I'm just like this. I think it'd be trouble for you if you drink coffee. And you know what it's not? It's actually like the only time I drink coffee is when it's like I was out till three, four in the morning and I had to get up at eight and I know that my body's going to be angry with me. I'm just like, oh, dude, I bet you you won't say shit <laughs> if I drink this. Yeah. And then your body doesn't. Your body doesn't say anything. So you couldn't do that for us the other, the other day? The other day, no. I mean, I woke <laughs> up. Dude, I didn't have the chance. If like I had to like, t if I w was up at the time that was available, I was like, oh, I would have powered through. Yeah. But I did. I, I got up at a time. <laughs> I got I up at a time that it would have been disrespectful <laughs> to say I'm on the way. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I would have said, oh, just God was into traffic, you guys would have been like, he went to Naples? Like, oh, why? Yeah, that would have been mean. So, dude. for anyone that doesn't know, obviously this guy's a fucking comedian, okay? Right. Yeah. Right? Right. Right. Okay. Right. okay. Um, <laughs> you are the creative director of Only in Dade? Uh, yeah, sure. I, is that I, what it is? Yeah, I'm, I've always kind of just, when I first started, I was the creative director. There. Like, my first job there was creative director, and then I was also doing some content. Yeah. Um, but then as the my role developed, I've become more of like a talent for the page, and then just a consultant, you know what I mean? Don't but I don't want to like change the LinkedIn <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, 
bro. I edit my LinkedIn <laughs> for that. <laughs> edit it, dude. <laughs> start a new a start a new month. Do you know what you do to tell them when you started this new Congratulations. No, LinkedIn. No, yeah. No, LinkedIn is actually a mission to change. (laughs) And the richest people don't have anything on LinkedIn. The richest people are like, you know, they're just like, they have one, like Steve Jobs endorsed me. It's like, yeah. Um, Wow, dude. I'm fucking dying over your Yeah, no, LinkedIn. Okay, so let's let's, let's talk about how the fuck you got into it. Stand up comedy. Like, sure. Walk us through the fucking. Because you you obviously do stand up as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, stand up is probably what I'm best at. Main... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm best at. Okay. That's what I'm best yeah. at. Um, but uh, I started stand up. I was a soccer player, like big soccer player. Oh, it's okay. the, all I really care about is Gosh, was soccer. Gosh, yeah. I played um for 15 years. I played and when I was and I had some moments that were cool, right? Like when I was um 10 or 11, or. 11 or 12, um, one of my coaches was like, I'm going to Argentina for this trial and I'm going to bring you with me. We're going to do a couple of like professional trials. My mom didn't let me go. And then when I was like 13, 14, I went to the Dominican Republic with my dad and I played with the national team. I trained with them oh. and they were like, sure, you can play. Like, So I would have like been on their like training national team, yeah. which they don't really play a lot of big games, at least not back then. Now they have all these scrimmages that are dope. Yeah. But back then it was just training. So I trained with them a couple of practices. Um, I traveled with like this dope team in DR. We went to Puerto Rico. Uh, sorry, we went to like, uh, we played against Puerto Rico. Uh, like I had some cool things. Cool. And then in Miami, I played at some clubs. I played at Kendall, the Academy Reserve. You know, I was a decent player. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, but the whole time, like in school, I was getting in a lot of trouble for talking and like messing around Class and just trying to shit. do, yeah, yeah just yeah. trying to do dumb stuff. And then, um, my senior year, I was like, I have to play in college. It's like the only thing I wanted to do was play in college. And then my senior year, um, I had a great season. Like I scored 20 goals. I was like, all right, I'm going to email every college. I'm going to send them my video. And then um, at the same time, I took a drama class. Like just like because it's like your last year. Like I, I'm funny. It'll be fun. Like I was never I never thought drama was weird. Yeah, I never thought drama was like, like, oh, yo, that's whack that you do that, dog. <laughs> yo, some people said yo, that. Yo, why would you be doing that, dog? <laughs> like, I never really like thought like that until I did it. Like, I did it once, and I told my friends, yeah. and they were like, yo, what, what? Yeah. I was like, wait, what's wrong with that, dude? <laughs> Brad Pitt is dope, isn't yeah. he? Like, but they don't think like that. Like, yeah. theater is what they think of it. And then they start to imagine theater and, like, yeah. they destroy you for it. So when I first did theater in my school, my boys destroyed me for it, right. and I never did it again. I was just like, all right, I'm a soccer player. Like, I'm not going to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> and then my senior year, I was like, I don't care what anybody thinks. Yeah. I'm taking drama class. <laughs> this is an easy A. <laughs> and I need to waste an hour. So I'm just like, fire, I'm going. And, dude, I was funny. We did improv. It was fun. I love the kids. The drama kids are hilarious, bro. It's like, it's also like, like you know that in theater in high school, that's where you start to meet your first gay kids, right? In your life. <laughs> like your for real. Gay kids. Yeah, yeah, dude. Like, like dudes, you know what I mean? That are like, ah! like they're just good at it, dude. They're so good at singing or dancing. Yeah. And you can just tell that like, they're more feminine than you, yeah. you know? And you're like, all right, but they're sick. Like they are like kids that are six, four. And you're like, I don't have that natural ability. Yeah. Like, that's what a gay kid is in theater. Like, he's able to snap into character <laughs> way quicker than other people, in my opinion. Yeah. Anyway, like the, like, the best kids were, like, you know, the kids that were more feminine. They were more in touch with their feminine side. And, um, bro, like, I was in that class just killing it, having fun. And the guy was like, do you want to do this competition with me in, in Tallahassee? It's 80% women at the competition. And I'll get you out of school for three days. And I'm like, you know how to sell. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you sell. <laughs> so, you know, eight, 17, 18 year old kid who just finished his soccer season, who just has to email coaches now and like just stay in shape. I'm like, let's go. Fire. So I ride out to, D- to uh, Tallahassee with this guy with a monologue by John Leguizamo. I had to memorize a monologue, a serious one and a sad one, and a, and a funny one. The serious one was like me like talking about how my, my brother found my gun under him my bed and shot himself and died Jesus. so like i gotta like nearly cry yeah. in the first one and then right after that i get up I, I would get up it's so funny i would get up i would get up i would turn around and then and then i would do this i would turn around while i'm standing up and then i'll go <laughs> and then right to the next yeah, and then like, yeah. I would stand up from this chair. It was supposed to be the first the first one is supposed to be me like talking to like a like a school, you know what I mean? Like don't play with guns. Yeah. And then I get up, I walk around the chair, I hold up to the chair in the front. Hello. I am Ramon. 
the Cuban cabana boy. Like, that. Oh, that. That's like they the probably love that. They oh my God. That. It was, fun. dude, I, I would have like people clapping. The girls were like, ah, it was like dope. <laughs> it was like amazing, bro. Cause I memorized the crap out of it. I was so scared. I was like, I'm going to kill this, bro. I ended up going to the finals of this thing. I don't even know how it works. Wow. I got Critics' Choice, whatever that meant, which like the theater kids were like, I can't believe you got Critics' Choice. <laughs> I'm like, what? Like I, think, I was a soccer player. I'm like, did I score? What, how many <laughs> yeah. points is that? Yeah. And um, like I ended up performing, I, I call my parents. This is the moment that I'm like, damn, maybe I'm good at theater. I call my parents at this thing. The guy makes me call my parents. He goes, you made it to this thing where you, your parents could gotta see this. Yeah. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, just call them and ask them if they can come. I'm like, okay. Like, literally, like, I'm like. They're making you call yeah, your Yeah, no, like, I'm annoyed with the whole <laughs> process. I'm like, fine, yeah. Uh, Mom, I apparently made it to something that's really good here. And they're going to put me in a thing. They want you to come. And she's like, okay. It's like two hours, three hours or something. They drove up. It's not that, well, it must have not been Tallahassee. It must have been somewhere else because it was not a eight-hour drive, whatever that is. Um and I don't know where it was, but we were staying in a hotel. So it was far enough they had to stay in a hotel. And they came, bro. And um, it was a huge theater. Like 8,000 seats, 4,000 seats, some crazy amount of seats. And it was half full. You know, maybe 2,000 people yeah, were in yeah. there. Um, and it was spread out everywhere. It's schools, full schools bring their people, you know. So it's like, it's like, you know, schools that are represented or whatever. And bro, I just did the monologue that I had done the whole week. And bro, like the reaction, like I, I don't even remember much of it. I just remember like, like the blue lights and uh, and like just thinking afterwards, like that was crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 like I don't really remember like the moments, but um, after that, I, I kind of like went to. I just became a soccer player again. Like, I went <laughs> like I just went. I just went back to school, college. You know, I just started emailing schools again, training. Never did yeah. any more shit. That was it. That was a tournament, whatever. I got out of school. I went back, and that's it. I'm back. And then I went to college. I played soccer, played for my first season. Never even thought about comedy. Maybe wrote a little bit of jokes here and there. Like, oh, that's funny. I'll write that down. Like regular people do that. You put that in your notes. Yeah. And then one day I was like. I got to, like, my season ended. And I was like, I got to try it. December 2016. I was like, I got to try it. I got to try stand-up. Like, as I always like stand-up. So I, I grabbed my friend, Alexa. She got home drunk one night, and I grabbed her in the dorm. And I go, can I tell you some of the stuff I've written? And if you hate it, I will never do stand-up ever again. And she was like, okay. And I did, like, an hour, bro. Jeez. Oh, shit, you did, like, a full fucking performance. I just went through, like, I kept going through my pages. Like, I had written a bunch of crap, and I just went through it. And this girl's, like, cackling, like... I'm like, all right, I guess I have to do it. Yeah. So then I did it. I bombed. Like, was not really that good. Like, I got a little bit of laughs here and there, but, like, nothing really great. And then the same night, I made, I, I ordered an Uber and went to, like, another one. Like, a, a, a worse open mic. Or somewhere else. Yeah, to try it one more. Like, I got to, I, I, that was bad, bro. <laughs> yeah. Put me back on there, yeah, dog. Yeah. The same night, yeah. I found something on Facebook, open mic, whatever. And I went to that one, and it was worse. Oh. <laughs> oh. Like, you were worse? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And the audience, it was all worse. Okay. okay. It was all worse. And I took my friends to the first one. Yeah. My friends were like, we're not going to go to the second one. I was like, I get it. Yeah. So I went to the second one by myself, and I was like, wow, should I just finished that with my friends? I got home, eating snacks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most likely, yeah. Instead, <laughs> instead I... I, I I created a monster. <laughs> <laughs> so what, did you go to the third one, try to see if it got no, worse? No, after that, I was like, that was like, that was like, every time I went to the soccer field, I was like, I don't feel bad at this. Every single time. I finished feeling that way. And I felt that like to the 20th degree with stand-up. And I was like, nah, I can't. I can't go out like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, yeah. Bro, so I just kept showing up and like, and then it, it as a competitor, as an athlete, yeah. you, you look at anything, anywhere, and you go, I got to do more than him. Yeah. And I don't know how to be better in jokes than you, but I do know how to do more, like yeah. pick up more stuff. Yeah. So like, like early on, I would like go to shows and like help them set up and like, <laughs> nice to meet you, bro. Like you're playing pickup. Yeah. Like you're playing pickup comedy. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucked. That's That's you know what I mean? It's pickup. I'm like, yo, what's good, bro? What's good? Can I run with you tonight or, or not? <laughs> you don't got room? You feel me? Like, like that. Like, that's how I came into it. I was just like, yeah, I was like, it's pickup comedy. Oh, yo, you guys play too? Okay, for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm in my, I got my little notebook. Like, my notebook is the cleats. I'm like, what cleats you got? You know what I mean? Like, it's the same. So I'm just like, all right. And I just start helping them with shit. And they obviously start giving me more opportunities. And I'm not being an idiot. When I go up there, I'm like, I wrote six things. And I know what it feels like to have a good 
time on stage. So I'm chasing that. I'm chasing that night that with the crowd, and I memorized all the words, and I knew it like the back of my hand. I want to go back to that night. I still haven't gone back to that night. You know, like those, I knew those words so well and I knew how they were going to react so well and they were all there and it was just dope, you know? Yeah, yeah. So like, I, I know what it feels like. I've, I've gone on tour and done some big, sh bigger shows, but like that was just like the, the dragon. So I just kept doing it, bro, and chasing it and like trying to find the most opportunities to get on stage and eat Facebook messaging people. Like, remember when I went to, wanted to go to college in soccer and I emailed every every college? Yeah. I did the same thing. Yeah, I started yeah. emailing every comedian. What's good, my boy? How do I get better at this shit? You want to wanna, wanna be my trainer? What's good? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I did all of it. And all of them told me the same thing. There's no advice. Get on stage. Every yeah. single one, the same thing. There's no advice. Get on stage. There's no advice. Get on stage. Okay? I kept just helping people set up, getting on stage, more and more opportunities. And then one day, I have a practice on a Thursday, on a, or on a Friday, and uh, I have a show. I have two shows on that same night. Okay. And they're going to give me two shows Friday, two shows Saturday, and one show Thursday and one show Wednesday, all at the same time as comedy. You get Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday uh, shows, okay. okay? And you get 250 for the whole week, or 300 bucks, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And you're 18, 19 years old, and you're a college soccer player, and, and you're in your sophomore season. Your freshman season, you didn't play that much, and now in your sophomore season, you're starting to play a lot. And you start to think, like, am I going to play forever? I hate practice. Like, you really start to think, like, I've played soccer my whole life. And you're only, you're 18, so you're like, what am I even, what is this decision right yeah, now? Yeah. It's like, so, bro, it just kind of came down to it. Like, I was getting playing time. Like, it wasn't that I wasn't getting playing time. That's not what it's about. It wasn't that, uh, you know, I, like, it wasn't that I didn't feel comfortable. Like, I was fine with the team. I was there already for a year. I was getting to know the players even more. And no matter how my sophomore season yet went, if I keep playing, I know that by senior season, I'm scoring goals, I'm starting. Like, it doesn't matter. It's like, it's a matter of time. It's about putting in the work. So I'm like, do I want to spend these next two years going for a starting spot on the soccer team? Or do I want to spend the next two years trying to become like a big comedian in Cleveland? Yeah. And it was like, you know, obviously I had to, choose i came i chose comedy like i call my mom my mom's like i don't know maybe you should do comedy i'm like okay my dad's like if you quit soccer you're an idiot like that's a classic dad so though. yeah so it was like and then i had to just choose i chose soccer i had the meeting with the coaches they made me tell the team the team was pissed nobody was like supportive really about it it was all kind of like it wasn't like they weren't supportive they were fine but it was just like what yeah, like, what like th yeah, they're a great team. I love that team. I still love them to this day. Blue Streaks, John Carroll University. It was a, a great time. Um, and they're a great group and a great program, bro. A team in the middle of Cleveland going to the NCAA tournament pretty consistently the past couple of years. Last year, they had a crazy year. Like, great team. And I knew that I was going to, by senior year, I could be there. I could be in the NCAA tournament with these boys. It could be dope. But, like, I chose to maybe spend that time grinding from scratch with something that like i thought i had a natural it's knack crazy yeah crazy damn decision. okay so you, so you tell the team okay whatever and now for from this point same thing you're just fucking smashing out shows like just going when does oh, the content yeah. start like when do you start doing the content um i don't know early on pretty uh, like in college i started a, a tonight show at my college it was whack <laughs> <laughs> like your own show just yeah, like yeah bro it was tough man it was okay like we had a decent show but nobody would come it's like it's the middle of cleveland there's three thousand students yeah it's like who would who wouldn't rather go drink on a tuesday night they'd love to like drink, yeah it's like you know so what's when's the what's what's like the what's the big break like when when in in the stand-up comedy stuff like when like when does it get to the point where you're like okay it hasn't happened <laughs> no <laughs> the big break no but no. but there's there's a there's a point where you are now able to have like more opportunities, more things are coming or your way. Your own show in Fort Lauderdale, things like that. Right. Come oh, on. Yeah. When do we start Come on. Come on, bro. bro don't that's do recent. that, bro. That's very recent. That's Talk very recent. That's very recent. recent. Okay. That's like, um, I would say the the, I think the game changer moment was um, getting on tour with Tim Dillon. That's what I brought. I wanted to talk about that, love bro. Tim I love Tim Dillon. Dillon. Yeah. Okay. So how, how the, the fuck? fuck is yeah. That? How did that happen? Um, so. I started, I was selling tickets on the street in New York when I graduated college. So that's how it developed. Like after the two years of grinding, I'm selling tickets in New York now. I'm going every other weekend. I'm getting on a bus, I'm getting on a train, and I'm going from Cleveland to New York. Every two, three, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, whenever I can, if I don't have tests and shit. Yeah. I get on a train, I get on a bus, I go to Cleveland, I sell tickets for the whole weekend. I met somebody there. The manager of this club went to Belen in Miami one of the managers of the club. So he's like, yeah, I'll let you sell tickets. He introduced me to another guy, another girl. Now I'm selling tickets every night of the week. 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, six hours a night in the cold. I don't give a shit. I'm making a thousand bucks a month. My parents are helping me with rent. I'm living off the rest. So, you know, I'm out there. I'm doing this for like a long time. And during that time, you see comics. Comics pop in. You see big names pop. Well, I saw, I've seen Louis C.K. walk by with his dog. Mm -hmm. I've seen, you know, David Tell all the time. I've seen Tiffany Haddish drop in on the cellar. I've seen Kevin Hart walk into the cellar. But, you know, you don't, you know, people go like, oh, it's crazy. You see, they just walk by. You know, it's, it's not like a thing where you really get to see him. Nobody goes, hey, I'm Kevin Hart. Let's talk. Yeah. It's like, doesn't happen. Yeah. They just walk right by. It's, but it's awesome. You know, you feel like you're in the right place. Um, so while I was selling tickets, Tim Dillon would come by and, and his opener would work at the club that I was selling tickets at. So we'd come and hang out with him and sometimes we would talk and like, you know, talk crap. I talk loud and a lot. Yeah. So I can be memorable sometimes for that reason. Um, and uh, eventually I think, you know, uh, we, we followed each other on Instagram just from that night that we met outside with uh, his opener. And then um, I think I would insult him and he would insult me on Instagram. You know, like we'd had some funny ones. Yeah. I think my favorite one, one time he, he posted a picture of some raw like beef that he was eating, like steak. And I put easy there, Joe Rogan. <laughs> and then um, he goes, he goes, um, he goes, <laughs> and I love him. And he's 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 so not uh, like really racist, which is why this is so funny. Yeah. But he goes, <laughs> he goes, white people eat steak like this because we don't have to eat it off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I could see him saying that, yeah. Um, and it's amazing. <laughs> it was so good. I died, bro. And then I said, and then I came back for us for the culture, yeah, which is go. so which is so funny too, because he, he tells I go, I'm doing this for the culture. He goes, You're the whitest guy I know. <laughs> like he's like, he looks at me, he's like, they're not gonna defend you, brother. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's awesome. Um, but uh <laughs> he's like, if you scream at a Pakistani woman at a 7 Eleven, you're done. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You don't you're not Latino, okay? Yeah. They're not gonna think it's an equal bat, it's an equal fight. Um, he's so good. But um basically uh after he said like that, like we have to, we don't need it off the ground, I go, You're right suicide is white privilege and then uh, you know what i mean for us you know what i mean like tutunk right chiki plank right i tried and then um and then this is the this is why he, he, fucking he's a, he, he's just an absolute murderer he goes he goes buddy there are things that are worse than suicide and one of them is selling tickets on the street. <laughs> <And> <laughs> He's got an answer for everything. And he though. just, exactly. Yeah. And so, and I think that moment, like, I think what you really have to do to, to succeed in, in comedy and maybe in business is just create opportunities, maybe even for others to win if it's not for you. Yeah. So I think like the fact that I got to a place where he could say a really funny line, yeah. that was more important to me than me making him think I'm funny. Yeah. I'm like, I would rather just our messages be funny. I don't care how they're funny. Yeah. I don't care if I'm the reason they're funny. If you're the reason they're funny, I just want it to be funny. So if you look back, you go, oh, was, he's chilling. Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I had that rapport with him. And then um, I texted him one day. I DM'd him after the pandemic. And I go, yo, uh, I, um, I saw you coming to Miami. Can I host? And hosting is like the bottom of the totem pole. It's like the lowest. I didn't ask him to feature. I was like, I'll host or whatever. I'll feature. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I just want to be a part of the show. I'll do a guest spot, whatever. And he goes, I don't care. <laughs> what? That's it? That's it. He goes, I don't care. Okay. Right? So I go, and when I read that, you know, when I read that, I go, yes. Yes, that means yes. Yes, yes dude. Yes. This is yes. Yeah. So I go to the I go to the improv. And they this is after I, I got the only in date thing. The only in date thing happened during the pandemic. Pandemic was crazy. But um that was uh I was I had only in date, a little bit only in date caught, so they let me just hang out there. So I went to the improv. And um, I showed her, and I was like, I showed Melissa, who's the best at the improv, and Justin, and I go, guys, he says he doesn't care. Yeah. And they were like, cool. And I hosted, bro. After I hosted, he was like, what are you doing tomorrow and, and Saturday? Or like, what are you doing next weekend or whatever? Or I don't know when the dates were. Maybe it was Tuesday, Wednesday, and or Wednesday, Thursday, whatever. He was like, I'm doing Tampa. You have a car? I'm like, yeah. He said, you want to drive up and do it? I was like, yeah. Drove up, did Tampa. After Tampa, he like zelled me the most amount of money I'd ever seen in my life in comedy, like a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred bucks, whatever it was. Like some, I was just like <laughs> sitting. I remember, I'll never forget that. You see how I forgot how the beginnings of my comedy career? Like I, I forgot the stage, like that stage. I'll never forget the zell coming in. Like I'll never forget that and be like, and, si and I'm sitting in the green room with like a guy that's been on Rogan, and you know he sends that zell to you, and you get it, and you're like, huh. That's the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the moment where you go, and then he goes, and then he goes, we got, I got this date, this date, this date. We'll see what we get you on. That is when you go, wait. And, and when he goes, write these dates down. 
Yo. Yeah, you're like, bro, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what I mean? you have to just be chill. You have to act like, oh, no, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that's what like, yo, yo, I gotta available? check. I gotta <laughs> check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can make it up. I'll be available for all of um, you. Is, <laughs> is there uh, any like comics or comedians that you looked up to? Like, throw the, or you still look up to that you try and mimic maybe or you take some yeah, shit? Yeah, I mean, I became a student of the game yeah. early in my life. Like, you know, my parents are divorced. I used to go to sleep listening to a lot of comedy because, um, I don't know, we just had a little bit of classic mom and dad beef, you know? Yeah. But, um, you know, I loved comedy as a young kid. Like, I love Louis. I love, um, you know, watching the old Eddie Murphy movies, Chris Farley movies. Uh, but stand-ups, like, I specifically, like, got into stand-up. Like, in, like, I don't know, ninth, tenth grade, like, I would just listen to it on Pandora. I would just listen to the tracks, like Jim Gaffigan tracks, Louis C.K. tracks, Kevin Hart sometimes. Um, not often Kevin Hart, actually, but, like, um, those guys. And then I started to, like, really care about it. And I'm like, okay, I like Jerry Seinfeld, bro. I, look, I like the way he works clean. I like the way that his whole career was set up. I like Larry David. And then I go, okay, now who's the Latinos? So I go into the history of comedy. I'm like, all right, so we have Freddie Prinze Jr., like, or Freddie Prinze, like the original Freddie Prinze, like the one that died was a savage at comedy. People don't even know that. Freddie Prinze is like the first, he was a Hungarian. He was Hungary Hungarian and Puerto Rican. Jeez. And he calls himself a Hungarian. <laughs> and it's it's hilarious. And then he does this on like Fallon, like on, on the Fallon of the time, Carson. Yeah. Or Fallon is the Carson of the time. It's fucking Carson, let's be let's be real. So I, and then I see Johnny Carson and I see all these guys. So like once I started doing comedy, like the first club I worked at, the Funny Stop Comedy Club in Cleveland, Ohio, they only let you work clean. The manager there's this crazy Lebanese guy. He only lets you work clean. So once I learned that, he, I, I go Steve Harvey. What do you I mean go, work clean though? Like no no swearing? cursing and, okay. and no yeah, sex yeah, really. Yeah. Um, but and I just did, and I and then some people wouldn't get work there because they wouldn't work clean. And I'm like, oh, you're stupid. I'll work clean. So I, the, the, again, the, trying to get all the opportunities possible yeah. after I quit soccer. Soccer was Monday through Friday, eight to ten p.m. So I just replaced it. Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah. <laughs> I literally just, <laughs> yeah, just right. Even right now, to, to, I'm, even, <laughs> even to this day, yeah, just the, people go, you played soccer and now you do comedy. I go, yeah, but then I just, <laughs> and that's really what it is. Um, I just flipped it. And um, so it was just that, sh like that mentality of like, I work clean. And then he said, Steve Harvey used to work at his club. And so I got into Steve Harvey. I got into Jerry Seinfeld. And then I'm like, I like Curb. I like Larry David. Larry David and him work together, but Larry curses, but Jerry doesn't. And they're friends. Wow. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, whoa. So you're like just and, learning about right, it, the whole so industry. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And then I just got into all of it. And then I go, okay, who are the Latinos? Okay, we have Freddie Prince. I like Freddie Prince. I want to be like, and then I get, I see the new Latinos and I, I go, I see George Lopez. I go, I like George Lopez. I see Fluffy. I go, I'm not like Fluffy. I like him but I'm just not like him. Um, and then I see Dane Cook. And yeah. then I see, you know, uh, Pablo Francisco. And then I see, you know, um, just every, all these comics. And then I, I'm the Latino guy. So I'm like, what are the Latinos at? You know what I mean? I see Felipe Esparza. I see, um, you know, uh, I start to, I try to figure out who's opening for who, you know. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Ian Lara now, the Dominican uh, kid uh, that is awesome, very funny. He's on Comedy Central. Um, the Savage. Uh, but I start to just get to know everything and get to know everybody. So, so I mean, yeah, that's crazy. It seems like you literally studied the fucking game, like top to bottom. Tried to. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. sure you're still doing it. But yeah, what's the what's the like? I, I guess you said there is no big break. But if there was a big break for you, like, what, what would that look like for you? Would it be just like your own your own tour, um, your your own headline tour, something big? Would it be like a fucking show, Comedy Central, like? Wait, what, what does that look like? I'm trying to understand the, the game, you know? A big break for me right now would be like a, um, like a commercial. Okay. All right. Like a, like a, like a discover, like a discover, just give me a lot of money, right? Like <laughs> it's just the money. Like really it's right now it's about the money, right? Like I worked, my, I worked for seven years. I made no money, right? Seven yeah. years, no money, right? <laughs> a lot of time for no money. And then on top of that, I did TikTok. I got 350,000 people on TikTok, 10.8 million likes. I made a thousand dollars. It's no money. You know what I mean? It's like, I feel like I've done a lot of work, you know what I mean? But I, don't have a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And then, and 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 then, but I don't want to cook either. You know what I mean. So that's important. People are like, if you want money, you should cook. I, go, I don't want to cook. So it's like it's. A, I'm in a huge dilemma right now. Yeah. You know. But you but you're you're with. Uh, I'm living an Uber Eats lifestyle. You're with, with no in, money. Only in Dade too. Yeah. So what do you do for them? I make videos. I make a weekly recap. That's all. Okay. I, I've been seeing them. Yeah, yeah. You gotta watch oh. the weekly recap every Monday. No, they're good. What do you think about like comedians? Like we've had a bunch of them on our our show. And a lot of them have, have uh, taken off through social media. It doesn't sound like you've done that. You went like 
on the ground first like you were really on ground but do you think that there's room for people to kind of make it in comedy by just posting content yeah yeah <laughs> yeah like, i mean now no, you're, you're no, posting a lot you post a lot too how right? how crazy yeah. would i be how insane would i be if I said no to that, if I say, if somebody goes, Marcelo, do you think there's a, an opportunity? Do you think there's an opportunity for somebody to become big just by posting content? I go, yeah. No, because no, you <laughs> there's no opportunity there. You can't post content and think you're going to be big. Okay, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Let me, wait, wait, let me guess. Let me guess. What are you going to do? You're going to get on camera and you're going to go like this and you're going to make money. Are you out of your mind? Do you think anybody can make money by shaking their ass for 10 seconds on the, on the internet? Are you stupid? This is America, okay? We're the smartest country in the world. Holy fuck. Okay, let Are me, you crazy? Let me rephrase the question. Opportunity and content. Opportunity. I think you guys are dumb for doing this. All these cameras, all these lights. There's no opportunity here. Nobody's doing this. Okay, this so, is stupid. So, so did that ever? <laughs> did, that, did it ever cross your? <laughs> you ever see a guy driving the wrong way on the road? That's what you're doing right now. You saw. You look stupid to me. Holy fuck! I'm fucking crying right now. <laughs> I'm right off. <laughs> no, okay, hold on. There, I know why you're asking this. Yeah. You're asking this because, bro, we've had other, we've had guys, and maybe they're from Toronto. <laughs> can you hear? Yeah, I <laughs> can. <laughs> it's so funny. These were just thrown around somewhere. <laughs> we don't use them. We don't use them. Yeah. We, uh, no, but you can if you want. Yeah, yeah. We, we had other, we had other comedians come on our show. Guys from Toronto, because we're from Toronto. Who, uh, like, like, we, like, we, we would call them like comedians and content creators, and they were like, "Nah, don't call me content. Don't call me a content creator. I'm a comedian." And I'm like, but bro, you're creating content. I get it's funny. I get you also do stand up. But like he's saying, these guys, their careers really took off from creating content. So why the fuck is that? Like, is, like, is that a so why'd you, thing? why'd you do it in such a hard way then? Why'd you do, why'd you do why was it so hard? <laughs> I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally stupid. Or like, be, like, it's like, just because okay. I'm an athlete. I was a soccer player. I'm dumb. I'm yeah. dumber. Yeah. I'm I'm less smart. <laughs> like that's the only reason it took me this, this long is I'm just dumber. <laughs> did did the co did your content help you get the job at, at only in Of Dade? course, 100%. Yeah. 139,000. <laughs> <laughs> they saw one of my videos the one about um not I don't like going to the club. The club is like the money Olympics. <laughs> I got to see that one. I got to see. The club is like the is, I think it goes the club is like the money Olympics. Everybody goes and just roots for you to spend all the money you brought. Yeah, you yeah. know, and then um a, a, a man will ruin his entire financial stability <laughs> One night. and the place will go crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? They'll They're love so it. Happy about yeah, it. they'll <laughs> love it. You know what I mean? He's like I won't pay rent this month. They're like, "Yes!" You know, they love that. Champions. Yeah, no, I don't like it. And then and then I said something about like um and uh, it's a risk. The, the 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 club is the casino, and the house always wins. Yeah, you go out, you spend all that money, you're betting on a good night. Yeah, okay. And then at the end of the night, you have orange juice on your shirt. The girl you want to get with has to get up early in the morning to go to work because she's a good woman because you have good taste. And now your friend is throwing up. So now you're dragging your friend out with no woman and a shirt that needs to be dry cleaned, and you spend three thousand dollars tonight. <laughs> so who who's who's really winning? <laughs> The house. This battle, <laughs> the house, the house always wins. That's a great interpretation. And that's why the only people that are really having a good time at the club are the bartenders and the bottle girls. Yeah, yeah. Everybody else is really having a bad time. <laughs> like if you really start to look around, nice. the, the, the the waitresses, they're having an unbelievable <laughs> yeah, time. Do you know why? They're making, they're money. making yeah. money right now. The only people that are losing money are all of these idiots. <laughs> None of these idiots are making money in here. No. Do you want to talk about driving the wrong way on the street? At a restaurant, that's how these people look at you at these clubs. It's like the promoters, the guys that are promoting the club. Have you ever... Ha listen... What feels more demeaning than a nightclub bouncer looking at you? <laughs> what makes you feel worse about yourself than that? I can't imagine that there is the same amount of guilt placed on uh, on on people getting cigarettes. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. this like you walk up to a club at three, four in the morning, you know, you're not sober. You shouldn't be. No. It's late. And the way that these bouncers look at you, bro, <laughs> they literally look at you like, like they like they've known you for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. They look at you like they've known you for 10 years and like they don't say this with their mouth, but they say it with their eyes. They go, yeah. you'll never change. 
<laughs> Yo, it's the worst. It's true. They do talk with their eyes, though. They, they do. And yeah. then you know what they, but while they're saying that, they open the fucking velvet room. They go, you'll never I mean, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Get in And then. then you go up to two girls. Have you noticed they don't take the money anymore? They've no. changed the business. The men don't take the money anymore. The men, they go, they go here, come on in. Yeah. And then you go, oh, I'm in. That's the beauty of this. Yeah. You, they open the thing, they go, you go, oh, I'm in. Yeah. Says, Miami clubs be like, the guy goes, oh, yeah, come on in. You open the thing, you get to a little cashier lady. And she goes, hi, guys. You're like, hello. She's like, just you two guys? I'm like, yeah, just me and my boy. We want to go in there, maybe me and my wife. <laughs> She's like, okay, well, it's a, it's a $600 minimum. <laughs> so however you guys want to just... And then we'll take you to the table. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And then and then you gotta go out. You gotta go out, and then you gotta do this. You gotta walk out from that club. You gotta go. Sorry, no. One second. You gotta go out. And then on the way out, you gotta you gotta go. I forgot we're meeting with the guys from Google tomorrow. Let's go. <laughs> and that's that's what you say when you walk out. That's how just, you get out of just there. to hope that the that the bouncer can maybe have some faith. But but but, but speaking about that. You were at Bottle Blondie. Yes. Blonde, Bottle yes. Blondie, the night that we were there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, we yeah, were with, we were with Nelk and shit. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how we. I bro, saw, I don't remember nothing. I saw, <laughs> thank God you didn't see him. Well, yeah, if you, if you saw me, bro, you. Bro, it was better you didn't see him. <laughs> Such a Miami conversation. <laughs> bro, you, bro should, you didn't see You <laughs> didn't want to see him, bro. You did no, not want to no, see him. Trust me, I believe, I'm telling you. And, um, yeah, I was gonna say, well, you, you know, talking about the club, that you were there. I seen you there. I'm there. <laughs> I, saw you I am not pretending not to be there. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm making an observation, and and I, the only reason I know this, it's because you're there, and right? And the only reason you can trust me, it's because you're is there. I'm there. <laughs> if I wasn't there, you can't trust. Do you do you go out a lot? I like to I like to dance. Okay. okay. I am not the blackout guy. Okay. I've never been the blackout guy. In college, I was playing soccer Monday through Friday, eight to ten, and I replaced it with comedy. In comedy, you basically get paid in drink tickets. But what's happening? I'm driving to these places. Okay. So I can't, and I have to drive 30 minutes from campus. And I'm still a student. So I'm like, I'm not worried about drinking every day like at all. And I never was. And I think that's why I look the way I look and I feel the way I feel. I feel good. I look good. I can still play soccer. I can still run around, jump around. I feel fast. I'll race you look any, I'll you race, look fast as fuck. I'll, I'll race you look either fast of you. As fuck right now, I feel so fast these days. I can't tell you how fast I feel. Um, the, the other day, I raced a valet guy. I swear to God, I raced him. I, I he he pulled stuff out of his pockets. I go, I guess we're racing, and we raced. I raced him in Tampa. I I I jogged in front of him. I watched. I watched as he struggled to catch even a, a, a glimpse of me, and then I took off to show him my power. I did the whole thing. It was amazing. So you like to dance. So right? I think because I like to, I like to, I like to be fast. I don't like to drink like crazy, yeah. but I do, in fact, get, you know, crazy on occasion, okay. <laughs> okay, on good. special occasions. Okay, I like good. to do special occasions. You know, if I party with Nelk. I, I would understand why you would look the way you look. Yeah, I look Sometimes <laughs> you have to do that. Now, if you, no, 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 we were past that. No, we were past that. No, we were past no, that. No, no, okay, I was okay. unconscious in the club. Okay. Okay. I'm like literally. So, so no, you did, but but it's okay. Don't worry about that. How did you meet those boys? How, how'd you? Um, Tim Dillon. I did like 15 dates with Tim Dillon okay. in total, probably 15, 16, something like that. C cities. Think about that. It's crazy. Some Unreal. of them were 10 shows. Wow. Like two times we did 10 show runs. And I have to watch him like an athlete. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this guy's just drinking lime water. Like it's crazy. He's a savage. Um, but lime is the green one, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> that happens to me much too often. Um, but uh, what were we talking about? I, I, was, I was just curious how you met those boys. Oh, oh yeah. Man. So we went, so we were in um, Nashville, I believe. Okay. And it is Nashville. And their whole squad came out. Steve, Kyle, Steiny, Brazilian, Gabe, um, Johnny. Was my guy Gambles there? Jimmy Gambles? Jimmy Gambles was not there, I don't think. Ah, okay. He might have been there, though. I don't want to exclude him <laughs> from this. Okay. Um, but basically, like, we walked into the room. It was really cool, you know? We just hung out, and um, after a show, after, like, a run of shows or, like, the end of a trip, I like to smoke uh, marijuana uh, occasionally. <laughs> Why'd you say it like that? I just want to be respectful. <laughs> So, um, I, uh, 
I saw that there were cigarettes that were being lit, so I lit my my thing, and um, I uh, I passed it to Steiny, and then Steiny was like, oh yeah, you're, you know what I mean? One of those moments, yeah, it's yeah. like a. It's like, a, it's like a whisper. You don't even say anything. You go, oh, you're talking about the... And you know what I mean? When somebody wants to be past weed, they don't speak. They go... You just know what they want. Because any words would be disrespectful to go, can I please? It'd be like, shut up. This isn't candy. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're not, I'm not, this isn't a, a chip. Can I please? Do you mind if I... You can't do any of that. You're just going to go, hey... And then they give it to you. So he Steiny gave me the... And then that was when I was like, okay, we must... You know, this is... We could be friends. We could be friends. Because he gave me the... And then, <laughs> and then he had it, and then I gave him the. <laughs> you know when you want it back, you don't. Yeah. Give, <laughs> you don't say anything either. You know you don't go give it back. It's not a toy. Give it back. It's not the ball. It's not give me back my ball. No, you go. I'm not gonna do it. You know, um, which is similar to vapes. Now I see the people vaping a lot. You know, it's same with the vape. People, people don't Passing say give me the vape. Own? They go, hey, <laughs> mama, mama. <laughs> You know, um, <laughs> but yeah, I met them that night, and then after that, I saw them at that thing, and then I, I talked to uh, uh, Kyle that night a little bit. Like, I mean, I, I like what he did. He did it also. I think somewhat of a, you know, he blew up huge, but he also didn't have an easy path. You know, he had yeah. his beginnings, and it was long, you know, I, I respect right. it. Right? It was not an, it was not a, a, you know, night to, you know, day and night type of thing. So. Um, and I told him that I had a similar journey. I have his number because of that. I called him the other day. He hasn't picked up. Please answer it was one day. I'm gonna call. I'm just gonna keep. I'm just not. Keep I'm, not I'm not. I'm not hurt at all. I'm not hurt at all. But I am gonna keep calling every now and again. <laughs> As you um, should. Yeah. Bro. Uh, but no. But th but it was dope to like even just be there. Like, and we took a picture together, and he posted it on his story, yes. and that's big. Like, that's something that you don't do for anybody. So I respect that he did that. I appreciate that he did that. I saw him on your podcast. I'm like. That's why I was so apologetic. I was like, dude, like that, like what you have here. And I was telling somebody on the way over here, um, who was I talking to about this? Oh, this girl, um, Kimmy, she uh, works as a, she works in um, comedy at WME at, a, at an agency, a talent agency. And um, I told her I was doing this podcast and I was like, I want to do this podcast because there's people, these are people like in Miami that get it. Like this podcast is gonna have a bunch of short clips. They're using subtitles. They have the cameras right on the face. They know exactly what they're doing. I want to uh, align with people that get it as soon as physically possible I like, like that so i think that you know it's it's that that's essentially what you try to do in yeah. general people that get it and tim showed me that i don't get it at all i thought i got it you know what i mean you know like it's like and you're always learning this and then i met emilio estefan in miami wow. and i go i thought i got it when i talked to tim but i still don't get it yeah. you know i don't get the latin side of it i don't get latin television i don't get you know a lot of stuff i don't get licensing i don't get you know yeah. I don't get management deals. I don't get agency. I don't get a lot of it. So, you know, every time you think, and then that was somebody, somebody said, uh, I might've been some actor said, every time you think you have it figured out, life will show you that you don't. Yeah. And that's kind of like the new way I've been operating is like, I, I want to keep having these realizations with the, like the idea of like, there's going to be another one. So it's like, it's like more of like that than saying like, now I'm stuck in my ways. Yeah. You know, I now I, I learned it. Just like open minded, yeah. Right, right. You have to. Yeah. Fuck, I'm gonna come on this podcast. These guys are gonna give me some good clips. I got some fucking content. Let's go. That's it. That's what it's all about. And I think everybody can respect that. No, hundred percent. I'm gonna I'm gonna put headphones halfway through so it looks like we did it on different days. <laughs> so I can post two groups of 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 short clips. As a matter of fact, take it off. <laughs> See, I'm gonna change everything. I'm gonna post. Uh, let's 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 talk about some funny shit now. <laughs> no, I, I want to ask you about being in comedy. Ask you about censorship and uh, like this whole canceling shit. Yeah. Are you worried about that? Um, no, I'm not worried about it really. Um, I, uh, I, I treat cancel culture the way I treat um, women. The way I no the way I, the way I treat uh, you know Amer uh, the way I treat like any outside threat. Okay. Like the, you know what I treat cancel culture the way I treat COVID. Okay. Tell us, tell us more. This is how I treat cancel culture. I'll try not to be around it. <laughs> number one. <laughs> number two. Number two. I, I know that there's somebody more educated than I that can tell us how to fight it. Right? Yeah. I don't know how to fight it. <laughs> I don't want to fight it. <laughs> Don't even want to I don't want to fight it at all. I want to live my life. Yeah, I don't have the time to fight it. Are you crazy? 
how crazy would I be if I got into a lab laboratory, which for cancel culture would be Twitter. And um, imagine if I got into Twitter every day. You know, yeah. when I'm in the lab, yeah, like a scientist fighting cancel culture. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be out of my mind. Does anyone ever hit you with shit that you've posted? Like anyone? Well, no. I also remember I worked clean, so like I never really yeah, have true. you know. And I don't want to. But the thing is, I don't want to. I don't want to like inspire. You prefer people. doing clean. I prefer. Yeah. Well, you know, I prefer to have fun. Yeah. And if if being clean is having fun right now, then that's it. And if it changes, it changes. But that's fun. I like. I also like the comfortability. Early on, I liked it. Now it's just my set. But early on, I like the comfortability of of going. I don't even have to listen to this guy's set because I know that he's not clean. So it's like, I mean, the the, re the reason I think we're asking is because I always feel like comedians are the are the guys who walk that fine line of like what can and can't be said, quote unquote. You know what I mean? Right. And so I guess, but if you're if you're staying clean, essentially, then like you don't really deal with that too often. Right. Um, yeah. It, yeah. It's like I don't even. I don't know. I think cancel culture is taking a life of its own and it's going to be there no matter what. That's another thing that it's like COVID. It's like, I can't control it. I can't stop it. It's going to exist for as long as it wants to exist. So, you know, I know that my generation of people is going to have to be more careful. Um, I know that, that older people have the ability to go, you know, my generation is still in control and we want to say what we want and you guys are going to have to let us die that way. And I get that. But I grew up in a place that was already safer. Like we were already, like I already, am probably more, you know, woke, and I hate saying that word, but then my parents are. Because of the generation I grew up, I grew up with a phone in my hand. We are going to be more careful, but subconsciously, like naturally. Like I don't have the urge to go crazy, you know? Like I don't, like, I don't have the urge to say these old-timey words because I didn't, I didn't say them ever, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's like... Or, or not even words, but like topics. Like, you know, like there's all these things about, like all those stigmas about homophobia, like I never had them. Yeah. You know, it's like, like at least I didn't, you know, cause the people that I surrounded myself myself with, I don't know, I just didn't really, my boys, I have boys that are, you know, I don't care. Or, um, you know, even about this, the cancel culture, it's the same thing. I don't surround myself in a group where it's important to us. Yeah. You know, we just kind of do other shit and we don't, and we don't really talk about anything that gets us canceled. We've never gotten canceled. We don't, you know, we don't, and if we do touch, touch on a topic that's cancelable, we try to be respectful, but you know? The way you approach it. Right, yeah. because that's just our generation. That's just the way we are. Yeah. We're nicer, bro. Your parents are way more cutthroat than, than, than you are. And it's because we're maybe the children of immigrants, whatever it is. But, like, I'm nicer than my mom, dog. I'm going to be way nicer to you than my mom would be, you know, yeah. or more generous yeah. or more emotionally intelligent or understand you maybe a little better because I'm younger. I, I get your frame of, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you a Miami boy, like? A hundred percent. Yeah, born raised. I didn't even think about that, bro. When I was little, I didn't think about being from Miami at all. Miami always seemed like a port. Yeah. Like it just seemed like a like I lived in this port city. My dad's always flying to Dominican Republic. My mom was always flying other places to like Belgium to, to work. Like I always thought that it was just I didn't really feel like in, engulfed in the culture. Like I didn't I'm also come from a Cuban Dominican household. Like we didn't watch yeah. UM games. Like my parents don't know anything about UM. Like yeah, yeah. when I was like four or five years old, or when I was four, my parents got divorced and then when I was like I don't know how long after that, maybe like when I was six or seven, my mom met my stepdad and like they got together and like he's more, much more Americanized and like he introduced football and like the canes and all this stuff to me. Um, and like, you know, a lot of American culture. And also, you know, he's Cuban. So I learned like, but I learned a lot about like fishing and shit with him. Um, but it wasn't like my natural thing, my natural like reaction. It was more like just learned. Um, I think, I think Time. Well, we, we, we've been saying this like because we, we made the move here from Toronto like bro like, this city is blowing up yeah like, and, you guys are both from Toronto yeah okay. and even like even like coming like here and talking to a lot of people creators like you entrepreneurs and shit like that people are like yo Miami is like next up like LA was like where you went to be like a creator in that whole entrepreneur lifestyle but like now people are navigating the Florida Miami obviously more specifically and I feel like we're seeing it more too so I'm just curious like have you seen that change in, in Miami? As like, I think over the pandemic, I would say, is when it really happened. I don't know. You, you yeah, I think. Pandemic? Yeah, no, I think um, Florida in general got a lot of press during the pandemic. Yeah. And Miami is, in my opinion, the only thing Florida has. <laughs> wow. Really, eh? No, that's that's bullshit. But like, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, like, that's how I rep my city. Like, I feel that Miami is something else. It's. I, I've said it on stage before. It's what Cuba could have been. You know what I mean? Like, 
you know, um, and I, I hope I piss off some communists, right? Who cares? Um, but see, that's the type of stuff I wouldn't, I don't care about being canceled for, yeah, yeah. you know, I don't mind. Um, but you know, yeah, I think, I think, uh, that, Miami, Miami, <laughs> Miami is the fucking spot. Miami is Miami is it. I think you know. Obviously, there's a lot of companies that are coming to Miami. You have the the, the bull. The you know our our mayor is trying to become the crypto capital. Yeah. Uh, is trying to make Miami the crypto capital. We have you know a lot of big people are moving here, real estate wise, for their businesses so that they can stay open, so they can keep people working, no matter what happens in the country. It's like there is you know a lot of appeal to the legislature to you know yeah. the way that we run it despite the fact that it can also at times seem insensitive due to the you know po culture. political <laughs> due to the to, to the political uh, atmosphere do you understand <laughs> yeah but, but so so you say what you say but then you be respectful you say what you say but you be respectful it's like they're going to keep this place open that's just the yeah, way it is yeah. maybe they won't who knows maybe a huge shift happens but you know it didn't happen during the pandemic and that's what Miami represents now and so regardless of what that how that makes you feel people want to use that there's 50 states in the country. If you are very rich, why wouldn't you have something in the state where there is this kind of, hey, we'll let you stay open. Yeah. Like, yeah. why yeah. wouldn't you put one thing there? Just yeah, put one. Just if one I was thing. rich as yet, I would just put one right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And put one right there, two in Texas, and just one right there. Yeah, you know, there you like, wherever, <laughs> and just wherever there seems to be a thing where it's good. And I didn't. I don't know that. That's not my knowledge. That's learning, dude. My mom is in real estate. Tim, you know, is a very savvy guy. He loves to le know information. That's another thing that I learned from him that I think is huge to learn for anybody. It's a huge piece of advice. Is like I am the kid that always hated the news. I hate the news. I hate it so much. I always didn't want to watch it. I, every time it would come up, I get pissed. And like it's because I never saw comedy in it. I never thought it was funny, and that is why I never watched it. And as soon as Tim kind of taught me that you have to be informed. We would talk about shit when we first started touring and he'd be like, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then one day he's like, dude, you, nobody likes the I don't know guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's facts. The I don't know guy. Nobody likes that guy. That guy sucks. Dude, I remember one time we were in Colorado and there's this huge thing of fire. There's fire. There's these guys working on the thing and they're just burning. Obviously they're burning like excess trees or whatever. And um, I don't know, dude, I don't know what happened. I must have I must have been stoned, but I literally said like, I I think they're just trying to keep warm. <laughs> that's that's the initial thing you thought, bro. <laughs> you got blasted, eh? Tim started dying of laughter and then just anger, just like you're. What the? Like, He's what? so mad that that's what you thought it was. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like what the fuck have I taught you? Like that, after that, like anger, yeah, yeah. just like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how do you try and stay informed now? Now it's it's just listen, bro, because I think it's it's you don't have to watch all this crap, but like just get get notifications. Read it and delete it. Like yeah. read it and delete it. Get up all the no I get all the notifications. I just read it and delete it. Yeah. And then once and I go through Instagram, I follow some news accounts and I then read it and then I try to delete it in my brain. But then I sit here and if you brought up something, I would have a great story about it. Yeah. If you brought up the Russia problem, I'll tell you right now, there's this hilarious website. There is the Putin's website. Putin's website is amazing. You gotta send send us that. All he does is tell people everything he said that day. <laughs> That's actually Putin. Genius. There is a person whose job it is to write down everything Putin says, and then they put it on the website. And they put it on the website. So they go at three p.m. to five p.m. Putin had a meeting with Rafael Dondongo, and then they go, they go. This is what happened, and it goes. Rafael goes, "Hello, Mr. President," and then it goes, "Putin," and Putin's like. Hello. <laughs> and then he goes, Rafael, how are you doing today? And Putin's like, good. There's no and way this is a Dude, works. I There's swear no to way. God, <laughs> their entire conversation. And Putin does a lot of things where he goes, yes, yes, I am aware. Like, people will ask him questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he's responding. Like, dude, it's good. It is really good. We're going to link that shit in. It is right? really good. You have to find that. It one. is really good. And, and it's just entertaining. Yeah. It's just entertaining. And it's, it's um, you start to understand this man that the world is obsessed with. And you look at it less as like, um, because again, he's like COVID. I can't fight him myself. Yeah. I can't fight him. Okay. I can send thirty three dollars to to Ukraine or to Russia. I can't send. <laughs> I can't send money to anybody. <laughs> I can't do anything to anybody. I can't post about it. I'm not gonna inspire somebody to make a lot of money. I only have twenty thousand followers, <laughs> and my content is struggling. 
I made a thousand dollars on TikTok. And I have 10.8 million likes. <laughs> I I am not I, I I'm not in the position to help anybody here. <laughs> but I am in the position to try to understand okay. a little more. A so what you like Putin now? No, <laughs> I don't like Putin. You like Trump? Um, I don't. I I don't I don't think that Trump is dude Trump to me is like it's like a it's like an enigma it's like you're asking me like like um like do you like Dr Fauci it's like I don't like these people or dislike these people these are people you know what I mean like these are just like like the cartoons from the TV show you know what I mean it's like these are like like I don't know I don't feel about them. No, I feel about my mom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Like that's pretty much it. That's another big framework that I have is like my mom and my sister, dog. That is it. Why? When I grew up, my mom was my kids. That's it. And politics was happening around my mom. A lot of shit was happening around my mom, but that was never her focus, ever. Never had a day where she's like, the politicians are stressing me out. <laughs> my mom never had a breakdown because of a tweet in her whole life. My mom never saw a tweet and went, oh my God, I literally cannot continue my day. Ever. This well, woman escaped that, communism. This true. woman came from Cuba and came here to work. And I'm like, mom, what do you think of the political climate? I don't care. Like, she needs to make money. Like, yeah. the political climate doesn't pay her rent. So it's like, it, it, it's, and like, you go, you, you, you want your kids to live in a, in, a, in a great place and you don't want them to live where there's a president, blah, blah, blah. And, and then my mom goes, but I want them to live. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's, <laughs> like it's, it's so much bigger than that, you know? So I try to continue with that framework, an apolitical framework where like, I can sit with Candace Owens and I can sit with Trump and I can, I, I'm not the guy that goes, I can't even sit with you. I can't even look at you. It's like, I'm not the guy that goes, that guy is despicable. I'm like, I don't know that guy. That he's a celebrity. Yeah. I don't know Trump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Marcelo, have you met Trump? D listen, if I meet Trump, oh, I swear to God, if I meet Trump and we meet at a bar and I go, hi, Trump, how are you doing? And he goes, and he spits in my face, I will hate Donald Trump. <laughs> I will despise him and I will probably come on every podcast and tell people about how much I hate him. If that guy spit in my face, anything, or even if he was disrespectful to me or to my mom or to my sister or to anybody, I would, and if I met him and that happened, I would get heated and I would hate him forever. But I don't know the guy. I've never met the guy. I, I've seen his speeches and I agree with what everybody says. What's every, what's I agree with everybody. I agree with everybody. I agree with the guy that goes, that's the best goddamn speech I ever heard in my life. I agree with that guy. I agree with the guy that goes, Donald Trump is the, is the best speech man in the history of America. I agree with him. And you know who else I agree with? I agree with the Mexican woman that goes, ese es un racist motherfucker. That's a racist motherfucker. I agree with her as well. I agree with both of them. And you know why I agree with both of them? Because it doesn't matter to me. Because I'm involved in something else. So yes, S.A. is a racist motherfucker. <laughs> and then I agree with you. S.A. he shouldn't have said that. He should not have said that. And then the, the guy goes, that's the best damn speech I ever heard. And I go, I mean, he, he did rile you guys up, didn't he? He did make you guys make some noise, didn't he? Yeah. So, you know, I think they're both right. Yeah. I, think, I think that he's messed up. And I think that he inspires a lot of people. You know? So I think... It's a very politically safe answer. And you know what? I, I hope to make a career of this. <laughs> I hope to make this my career. Safe answers. This is fucking media training here right now. Yeah. This Listen. is what happens. See, this is why you take the long route. Is because then when you get there, you don't blow your load. I'm not trying to go quite viral. You know um, what I mean? Let's say, uh, let's say it was a different time, okay? And you were starting your comedy career today. 24 years old. Let's say you were starting right now, okay? What would you... What would you do differently than what you've done in the past? And would you give yourself any advice knowing what you know now? Okay, Marcelo, you're 24 years old. You, you, you've worked in sales for, for, you've worked in sales for four years. You know, you're going to get into this. Do stand up every night. And during the day, work. Hopefully you have some money saved up. If you don't, you got to have a day job. But if you do have some money saved up, get do this right here. Podcast. Just this. Just get a camera, get a light, get a chair, get a microphone, and do this every day for an hour. And 
and you see what happens. And, and, <laughs> I agree. And that's it. I think that's a good plan. And at the same time, go on stage as much as you can. And that's what I was, that's what I'm, you know, that's what I did a little bit when I, you know, when I, things started to pop off. But then it was a lot of work and no money. Yeah. Which is tough. So, I feel like, I feel like nowadays, like it's just worth it. I mean, you lo- you have a passion for stand up, which makes sense. Yeah, but you're also 22 years old. You just graduated college. Everybody's got, everybody's got a job, huh? Yeah. No, everybody's no. got a job. Yeah. You're looking at your friends, they all got. I'm at, my, I'm at my dad's house <laughs> with a headset on. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it, we, you don't you don't not work. You know what I'm saying? Your mom yeah. your mom escaped communism and graduated college with oh, okay, you, with you in her stomach. Wait. Yeah. Okay. The picture. <laughs> yeah. Of her graduation. <laughs> yeah. The diploma yeah. is me in the stomach, dog. That's crazy. That's crazy. When that is like that, you you get a job. Yeah. And dude, and the world is ending on top of it. Yeah. So imagine, you know, they were helping me with rent. But then when I come to Miami and I'm in the house, they're like, Ugh. and all I'm doing is watching like Dave Portnoy. Like I'm just trying to learn more. And they're like, you can't learn right now. <laughs> You're 23 years old. <laughs> it's too you late to learn. make money now. I love how there's just like a, a time later on when you can learn. Yeah, they go, yeah, no, no, no. no now you can learn uh, on your off time. Okay, so <laughs> get a job. My mom said, get a job. I had that moment with my mom. Yeah, get yeah. a job. That's a that that's a hit you in the chest moment. Yeah, that one hurts. That is a hit you in the chest moment. Get a job. It's over, buddy. That's the, when the it really cl- hits the, you. The clubs are done. It's pandemic. It's over. It's pandemic. It's done. <laughs> eh, la, pan- la pandemia está de venga. You're going to have to get a job, Bobby. I'm sorry. So, okay, but what, what I was saying was that instead of doing stand-up, which might be harder for more people, like other people, other comedians, yeah. just fucking post post instead? Yeah, if I started today, I'd probably just post just instead, post but, instead. but I'm glad I went the hard road. Well, that's harder to learn. Like, I feel like that takes more skill I also feel to like get I, up on stage. I also feel like I have more stripes. Like Yeah, that's true. Like, like Charlie, Charlie D'Amelio made the gazillions and she didn't leave her house. Yeah. And that's awesome. And I'm proud of her. Charlie, I'm a big fan. But... <laughs> But I, and when I do make the millions, it will be because I sat on a train for 12 hours. Yeah, you put in the work. I was in a bus. Yeah. I sold tickets on the street. I clean vomit. I you intern. Met Tim Dillon. I take food to tables. Yeah. I learn table numbers at clubs to take food. Yeah, I would do anything. I set up microphones. I set up speakers. I, I drove around comedians. I drove around comedians that I'm performing with now. Yeah. I drove them around comedy festival in Cleveland. When you do stand up, is it is it mostly improv or is it scripted? It's scripted. I have I carry this everywhere. Oh jeez. I carry one of these. What? Okay, give us something. I have a bunch of these. <laughs> I don't know if I can give you something, but I'll see if there's any better ideas. I haven't said before. Oh yo. Um <laughs> yo, potatoes. Potatoes. You ever hear people say you ever hear people say potatoes are all carbs? You hear people say that? All the time. All we do is talk shit behind potatoes back. <laughs> but we keep eating potatoes. <laughs> it's true. I have not seen a, a, a community that hates potatoes more than people that eat potatoes. <laughs> they hate it, but they eat it. Yeah. They go, I hate potatoes. And you say, I'm going to eat potatoes. And they go, you know, that's just carbs, right? You know that? <laughs> yeah. You, you know, remind them all the carbs, time, yeah. But they eat potatoes. <laughs> and you know who eats potatoes the most? Vegans. Do you know why? Because there's nothing else to eat. <laughs> They eat french fries because there's nothing else to eat. It's potatoes. Baked potato, french fried potato, sweet potato, 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 how much potato, potato. Pr- How much would the price of that book be for, uh, right and, now? And, and, uh, if I wanted um, to buy that off you. I don't know. I lose them so often. I might just <laughs> give it to you. Potato, potato, potato. You know what else I think about potatoes? Potatoes, they are bad. I think they are bad. Yeah, probably. I think platano is much better. Do you know what platano is? <laughs> Platano is plantain. You know what oh, plantain yes, is? Yes, yes, yes. Platano. So li- listen to this. Ready? This is what's crazy to me. This is why I don't believe in, in so much in white privilege. I believe in country privilege. Okay. White privilege is real, though. Let's be real. Um, potatoes destroyed Ireland. Right? Platanos built the Dominican Republic. Do you understand that? Do you want to put that into your frame of mind real quick? Okay? In Dominican Republic, we have a saying. You know what it is? It's platano power. That's the saying. (laughs) Do you know what you hear after the word potato? Famine. Wow. It's not potato power. It's potato famine. It's platano power. You understand? (laughs) 
Do you understand? Do you know any big baseball players that grew up just eating potatoes? No. I mean. But you know how many grew up eating brother? How many? All of them. Even the white guys. Because when they turn 12, they meet a Dominican guy. <laughs> and he starts to feed him the platano. And he goes, I'm never going to eat potato again. <laughs> so I'm going to eat platano. <laughs> if it, think about what, think of, okay, let me just tell you this. Think about what platanos could have done for Ireland. Imagine <laughs> if at the time, imagine if at that time a Dominican thought, if we get on a boat and we take these platanos to Ireland, how much money you think we're going to make? <laughs> yeah. The Dominicans could have taken over the world. Yeah. If they would have just exported, late exported that plato. It's too late. It's too late now. Because now the Irish have access. But, but I've you seen plantain everywhere here, actually. But you know what? Have you seen plantains in Ireland? <laughs> no, I've never been Well, you know what? This is Let's vision board this. This is a dream of mine. One day, Marcelo will open a plantain farm in Ireland. In Ireland. And it will probably have to be indoors due to the weather there. You just manifested that. Well, time stamp that. Time stamp it. I'm going to build a plantain farm in Ireland to save their future from another potato famine. <laughs> so, so, so you just said potatoes and then you just went off on potatoes. Is that how the jokes happen? Yes. You think of the, the fucking sure. concept? Sure. Sure? Sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. sometimes. Sometimes they happen just like talking, you know? Sometimes they happen like that. If you could open for anybody. Yeah. Don't say Tim Dillon. No, no, it'll be Jerry Seinfeld. Damn. And it'll suck too. I'll have to practice. I'll have to really practice. I'll have to like sit down and practice and make sure it's exact. Because I've heard of how he works. It's like exact. It's like you can't, you know, I'll also wear a watch. I'll wear a digital. I'll buy an Apple Watch. I will purchase an Apple Watch just to open for Jimmy for uh, Jerry Seinfeld so that I don't mess it up. Why, what, what, what is it, he why needs it to be exact. He comes from a time. <laughs> why the watch? So it can clearly tell me the time digitally, oh, yeah. so I don't have to look at the hands and start <laughs> doing that. Having a seizure? Hell yeah, no, yeah. I'll have a seizure. Um, so yeah, I just want to be like, um, and I'll have a joke where you look at the watch. Like I have to think of it that hard too, yeah, yeah, because I like that. he is something else. Okay, he, had, he uh, Mark Norman worked with him, and I heard about this. Uh, it's on YouTube. You know, he he needs you to do the exact time. He comes from a time where you do the exact time. Yeah. And if you go over the time, you don't even notice. Oh no. I, I, I did exactly the time. Maybe the clock is off. Like he comes from a time where it's like, you know, you're set. Yeah. You know, you're 15 minutes. You know it. You know it. You know it. You know it. So, yeah. okay. uh, uh, or whatever the time that would be. But yeah, one day that'd be, that'd be a dream. Jerry, you will see this one day. One day. <laughs> we'll have him on the show one day, right? Okay. And here's the last question because we're going to get charged 20 grand if we go one minute over here because they're like Jerry Seinfeld. Good, good, good. Okay. We're the MBH podcast, bro. Money buys happiness. Yeah. What do you think of the term? Is money by happiness? Um, we talked about it a little earlier. Yeah. I think money is all about circumstance. Okay. Sometimes it's not about the money at all. Okay. And then sometimes it is. I mean, you spent 30 minutes being like, I need the money. I need the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I also spent 30 minutes telling you about how I sold tickets and clean vomit yeah, yeah, yeah. for yeah, free. True. So, right, right, and, right, right. and something that I'll note is money does buy happiness, but that how the money comes is the question. The money is going to buy the happiness. That's a fact. But how did you get the money? How'd you make it? If you made the money in a way that feeds your heart, or if you can convince yourself that your job is feeding your heart or feeding the world, then the money will definitely buy you happiness. But if you are unhappy in your job, the money will buy you stuff. Won't make you happy. Though. Yeah. Because you still you gotta stuff. go to that job. Yeah, it'll just buy you stuff. You can you can always have stuff. It just won't buy you it's happiness. Yeah, you'll have stuff. A lot of you'll have the stuff. <laughs> Does money buy you happiness? Um yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Right now, yeah, hundred percent. Uh, money that I can get for any reason right now is, is happiness for me. <laughs> just, just went against your whole point before. <laughs> no, because think about it. Because why? Because what I do makes me happy. So okay. it's like, so it's like, it doesn't matter what I do that day oh, okay, to get okay, the money. Okay. It, you know, if it's a commercial, whatever bullshit it is that I got the ten thousand. The reason I got there, I'm so happy about. It. Okay, okay, okay. Like okay. the 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 behind the scenes that I got there. Because to you, you're like a commercial. Why? So simple, Marcelo. It's like no commercials pay a lot of money. Why? What did I want to do? A cool commercial and do one line. It's funny, whatever, two lines. And now I got a lot of money. And the way that I got this commercial is by making connections. How did I make the connections? From selling the tickets. How did yeah. I sell the tickets? From being in college. It, it all just becomes this beautiful story. Yeah. 
We're gonna need a fucking book. You're gonna need a book. Oh yeah, we're gonna like one a picture day, book. One day. I think that'd be funny. And I hate to read, so <laughs> so imagine the book I'm gonna write. Imagine the book I'm gonna write for you. If I hate to read, that's gonna be the title of the book. I hate to read. <laughs> That's going to be the title of a book. I hate genius, to read. Genius marketing. I'm going right. to write a book. I hate to read. And you're going to want to open that thing because I don't think you're going to have to read a lot. It's probably going to, I'm going to figure it out. It's a picture book. I swear to God, it's going to be all barcodes and it's going to be me <laughs> talking on each page. I'm not listening. I'm not making you read shit. You're going to go like this. Just and it's just phone. playing videos. I re- I say the page to your That's ass. That's genius, actually. I say, sh- fuck, dude, yo, cut the cut the cameras. Yo, you, you cut like the cameras. No, 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 like no, cut the cameras. <laughs> cut the cameras. Cut this shit out. That's like a, too like good. A, like a book that size, like the one you have, the God notebook. God damn it. Damn it. And Stop it just, the idea. Stop every it. page is just a barcode. Dude. That's genius, dude. Man. And it's wow. only like 15, 20 pages. Because I'm talking for like a minute or and two. It's, and it's $5,000. And it's and it's expensive as fuck. 5K. 5K a book. Oh my gosh. See? You see, that's where I didn't think I needed a fuck. I think like that often. Yeah. That's important to me. The, that, the when to curse. Yeah. That's important. I didn't mean, yeah, I didn't, you haven't swore, like you haven't really swore this. No. And I think of it like this. Seinfeld said this. This is, you know, why I th- how, how he thinks about comedy and cursing. Because people go, why don't you curse? And his answer was brilliant. He goes cursing and maybe it's not true and today it's not true and he admits that today it's not true he admits that today you can say whatever you want people want real people want real so you maybe you should curse he says that today if he was around he maybe would curse more because of how real people are wanted today it's not like this he said before he said that he said before before he said cursing is a great shortcut of comedy yeah the idea uh, uh, you can curse but that's like cutting through the infield in an f1 race the idea is that you go all the way around the track. Yeah. So cursing does get you there faster. Yeah, it, gets you to your last it gets you to the destination quicker. But the idea is that you you go around the track. Damn, bro. <laughs> That's bars. I can't believe you've been wearing those shades this whole time, bro. I'll be yeah. Honest. No, I <laughs> love. unreal. I like Tim. D- Tim did this a lot, and and I, yeah. I I'm a big shades guy. I wear shades all the time. I, when I party, I like to wear shades. I think that um, the first thing that goes in, you know, that gives away a lot is your eyes. Yeah. And so I think when you give, when you take away your eyes, you give yourself a lot of power. Damn. You know. So I try. I also have. I have crazy eyes sometimes. My eyes open really wide. Yeah. I don't like how it looks. I'm insecure. I don't mind to admit that. I'm a man. <laughs> I'm a man. I can say that. I'm insecure about my eye size when I get inspired. Jesus Christ. Straight up. I'll tell everybody. I, yo, I haven't laughed this much during an episode before. I'm not going to lie. I'm glad. I mean. Can, I, usually I do the like, if you made it this far, thank you guys. Like, subscribe. You know. You want to do it though? I'll do it. Sure. This camera. Right this camera. Um, uh, what do I say? <laughs> If you made it this far, if you made it this far, that's your line, okay? Subscribe if you haven't, like the video, you know, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, if you made it this far into the video, you need to reevaluate your life decisions. Think about how many things you could have learned or done during this time. Maybe take a step back and you know think about what you should do. This is the Money Buys Happiness uh, podcast. I'm here with these two amazing guys. You got to watch this show. It's real, and the lights are good, the camera's good, and they have subtitles on their short clips. What else do you want? (laughs) 